with some hippies. These are my friends. Come along with me. See how the story ends. Hey, another dollar. Folks, welcome back to another episode of the Professional Hippies Podcast, where we like to find the happy media between the professional world <laughs> and all you hippies out there. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> How's those brain cells doing, buddy? Uh, Is it like me trying off. to start a fire up, up in Tennessee? Mm. Can't do it. Not lighting. Wait, are you saying you or me? Me, because, me. Right. When we were up in Tennessee, yeah. when it was like, oh, when you were like, come on, Eagle Scout, and it's just not lighting, and I was off <laughs> That's off a my rocker. of a beautiful friendship, though, right there. Off when my you... rocker about 500 days. I don't know where it was at that time. If, uh, if you are, if you know your best friend is more than comparable in a task mm -hmm. and you, you know, you should step in, you at least have to watch them fall flat on their face and step in gracefully, right? Don't embarrass them. <laughs> Just take over. Just let them know. Hey, we're done. Here. Okay. It was like, like, this is your, my hands working out. You're like, Hey, hey you start. Hey, Just... <laughs> there you go, buddy. Go get a beer. <laughs> It was the confidence for me, honestly. It was the confidence. <laughs> oh, you don't know how to start a fire? Oh, you know that? <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Look, put two pieces of cardboard together. It'll work. You didn't know if you were lighting a pile of sand or cardboard or sticks. And it didn't. Honestly, it didn't matter. I mean, sand would have been more flammable in that moment. But. For sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it was so bad in my mind. I had to take mushrooms when we were in Tennessee just to be like, I'm going to light it after four days of rain. <laughs> and then it took me two hours to do that. Well, like, you did do that. That actually that was tough. That, that I was like, I'm going to take in. mushrooms and then do this. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I'm getting one with nature, baby. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. And I was going around breaking every little twig around the place, trying to make it work. No, you did great at that one. That was one. It, had the roles been reversed, I don't know that I would have <laughs> been very successful at all. That was so bad. That way. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Just awful, man. But how was your week, dude? Fourth of July. We have all we have all our fingers still, which is all good. fingers. I don't know that Joe still has all his fingers. I don't know if you saw his internet presence, but uh, Joe, what happened Joe, there? I don't know. I didn't see it. Did you have a good time? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Check in on your friends because uh, we need yeah, Joe to I, come back on. It was a great, so it's weird. Today is Thursday, and it feels like uh, Sunday because yeah. going to Denver on Sunday um, just like messed up. Felt like the weekend the whole time or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that was Denver two times in, what, two weeks? So um, part of that was, you know, kind of refreshing because when Abby and I got there, we went and got brunch at this really funky spot. As we're sitting there, it just occurred to me, it's like every time I go to Denver, it feels like home. And I was mm. like, you know, I haven't had a goal in a long time. Like there's minor goals, but that one where you're like, it, this one goal by doing it, everything else kind of falls into place. And so mm. in that, um, in that trip, we, we discovered like, hey, it actually feels very aligned to move to Denver. So we're putting it as a goal within the next year to move to Denver and uh, that that's kind of a footnote to the week, mm. but uh, it was, it was great. We had an opportunity to catch up with some friends, had an opportunity to, um, you know, make some memories, got to see a glacier. I think for the first time I can't, have we seen a glacier before? That feels like something we would do. Go see a I glacier. I have seen a glacier before. Right. There's yeah. a glacier hike in Denver. And, really? Uh, yeah. Dude, there were people snowboarding and skiing in July. We, wow. went, we went on a hike 40 minutes outside of Denver, and um, it was maybe, a, I think it was a mile and a half or two mile with like a thousand foot gain, and mm -hmm. we started the hike, it was probably 69 degrees, got down to like 63, and people are skiing and snowboarding on this mountain, and it was super cool, beautiful waterfalls and lake and... Um, all that kind of stuff going on. And I'll be honest, I mean, out of the group, I might have... There was the people that just didn't go. And mm -hmm. I probably had the most resistance to someone that did go and was excited. But I was like, hey, I have never gone to a birthday <laughs> party that we discussed doing CrossFit or 
hiking while we're actively partying. Mm. Turns out it's a great mix. Great mix. Really earned uh really earned those brewskis. <laughs> I feel like you would I feel like you would have crossed that path multiple times with since especially since you do CrossFit. All they talk about is CrossFit. I figured you would have come across yeah. the party where they definitely talked about that every second. Well, the other part of the conversations too is a lot of people uh <laughs> when we were talking about CrossFit, it, it's amazing a lot of people in the CrossFit community uh how much their bodies break down. That is a mm-hmm. consistent theme that I've seen come up because it happened with my body. Um Nick who was on our podcast and uh, several other people. I mean, yeah, that just seems to be a theme. If you don't take care of your body outside of CrossFit, you don't want to talk about CrossFit anymore. Like, the only people that talk about CrossFit are the people that like <laughs> stay the path of being very disciplined. It doesn't seem like CrossFit's really friendly to partying and all that <laughs> stuff aside to it, you know? <laughs> Orthopedic surgeons probably love CrossFit. Love a it. Lot. I, I went to yeah. one and he was like, yeah, no, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Please we'll keep surgery. doing yeah, please keep doing it. Don't <laughs> don't back down. Don't you change. got it. Don't, don't change. Beat your mind. Don't mind let listen to your matter. mind. Yeah, that's right. Mind Discipline. over mind over muscle fatigue for sure. <laughs> he like sells you the motivational poster pack. <laughs> the lion yeah. motivation before starting six pack. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got other highlight things that trickle out. Did you end up doing anything for July Fourth for America's <laughs> Freedom Day? Yeah, we went through uh, hatchets, which was a lot of fun. Went to one of those hatchet throwing places. That was really cool. Um, then we went to a Dave and Buster's afterwards. Got rowdy on the the arcade machines, and then made it back home to watch St. Pete's fireworks. Mm. Just a good all in all solid. Sounds day. very wholesome. Yeah, fair. we definitely thought hatchet throwing would be a way busier. And we were one of two other parties in there. Really? <laughs> At all. Yeah, I definitely thought it would be way more packed, but, you know. It sounds like a patriotic kind of thing to do. It's like you're honoring at least one of the presidents. I don't one know the- <laughs> who would be into it, but. A representative, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it's like Teddy's thing or maybe like a John <laughs> dude. Doesn't feel very Lincoln-esque. I could see George going to town with some hatchets over that river. Yeah, for sure. Definitely George. It's just like, I'm going to cross this fucking river later. Also, just is it is up. it even American or presidential to address them by the first name? I think the first five you can. <laughs> <laughs> that six dude. I, think, I don't know who the six uh, dude was, but that six dude was like, screw you, man. I got, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's like a doctor. Respect on that name. It's like a doctor. I'm Dr. Anderson, not Anderson. I will say Obama is one of the few presidents where I looked at him like, no, that guy knew exactly how much swag comes with the position. <laughs> the way he'd kick off interviews, he's like, you know I'm the fucking president, right? <laughs> They're like, yeah, 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 we know. Cool. Cool. What's up? What's up, There's dog? There's no bubbles in these waters. <laughs> Gonna need the bubbles in those waters, please. This water is not 73 degrees. <laughs> Excuse me. We're in America, right? I want the Alaskan water, not the D.C. water. Thank you. You know, it was a shame when you brought up the brain cells thing. When we were on the glacier, there's Such a shame. really beautiful <laughs> rock picture scenic kind of moment. And these old people were very with it because we we're like, I was, oh, let's wait and take a picture there. And the guy was like, uh, what do we old people look like? And I couldn't fire off the joke. I was trying to think of Mount Rushmore. And then it came to me at about <laughs> 4 a.m. two days later. You know, when you have one of those moments, you're driving down the road and you just, <laughs> you're just out of nowhere. Just that voice in the back of your head. Yeah. 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 I was really disappointed. It's like, I almost wish I could have got their contact information. Be like, hey, <laughs> just- I need to finish that joke for you, dude. This is, you know, I might start doing that when you're like trying to think of something and then I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. Actually, let me get your number. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get back to you in two or three business days. Don't you worry about it. Well, it's one of those candid moments where I wish someone could have seen me thinking and recorded that and just like panned and done a, a close up, like a zoom in. What's going on in there? Yeah. <laughs> Like, what is that fucking mountain with the old people? <laughs> with the old people. Mount Rushmore. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was pretty good. I mean, someone partied in the White House, you know, for Fourth of July. They found Did cocaine. They find in that. that was that Fourth of July. They discovered it. I assume so. That's when I started hearing about it. So <laughs> I just assume it was some event happening at the White House. Well, it feels like most of the things that come out of the White House are uh, like there's a political agenda to it. For sure. I mean, that's, all, that's what it's all about. Someone's I mean, trying to get promoted, someone fired, someone hired, whatever. Because yeah, we're talking about four air, it's that. like, it's just some staff, were found, some staff were found it. It was like, I'm going to get you, buddy. Like as they they did a bump out of it first, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, showed me a, a shame if Janet's cocaine be was his, discovered. Hunter Hunter Biden's uh, assistant <laughs> isn't doing too well, is he? Do you see the story about Hunter Biden getting caught doing 175 on crack, going to Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> it got got pulled over <laughs> a Turbo S Porsche. Oh man, if you're gonna do it. 175 doing crack down the highway. <laughs> Actively doing crack. Actively doing... Is this guy fear and loathing? <laughs> is this the story? There's sometimes the you read headlines and you go, oh, drugs. And there's some headlines you read and you're like, I can't even be mad. I feel like they're doing it the right way. Like if you were going to do it. Yeah. I, like, I don't understand how he's, if if he keeps getting caught with crack, I mean, that's like, how many other people out there are just professional crack users, you know, that are just out there well, they maintaining get such a... don't, because... Well, they get caught or don't, but... Are you really are a lot professional of like, if you're getting caught? That's true. And he's getting caught, caught. He's getting multiple caught, times. caught, caught. He's like a dirty multiple boy. Times. The TSA knows exactly what he's doing, and he's probably got like a little fetish kink about it probably likes it a little bit <laughs> dude there's like no a, way you are the president's son there's no shot no the way TSA doesn't know every fucking millisecond of what you're doing someone's following him he's got someone protecting him for sure at all times multiple people multiple how's there people's full-time job is to make sure that dude doesn't do more crack or fuck hookers in Vegas. And like that a, is exactly what he did last week. It's like a serial killer <laughs> dropping clues. Like, all right, I'm going to this, you know, I'll leave this little baggie here. See where no, that goes. He leaves the camera <laughs> on. He installs yeah. like extra webcams on his laptop. So whatever dirty business he's doing on the internet, they have to watch it. He's into them watching it. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Like when it hits the news, he's just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Weird sidebar. You did make me think of it. So we went to Red Rocks and saw Zed's dead. And uh, I'll start with this and see if I can circle back to the nipples. But it wasn't until an hour into <laughs> Zed's dead that I realized there's two people up there. And so I look at my buddies and I was like, hey, weird question. Because I know how fired up we are for this trip. Who's up there with Zed's dead? <laughs> my buddies were like what you know it's two people right i was like no i thought they just brought somebody out for that song he's like no whole set two people like that's like actually that's that's the group like they don't there's, there's always been two people up on the stage i always thought that was one person too how fucked up have I been every time I've seen them? <laughs> all <laughs> right, shit. right. So we're getting somewhere here. Okay, so so at that point, then I'm like, all right, well, I know, you know, I took some concert enhancers for this show, which were awesome, but I would like Sprite to iron light. this out, you know, to just know who I'm observing here. <laughs> so <Sprite> remix. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> is it fair assessment to say that Zed's dead is Zed and who's dead? Like, who's the dead guy? If Zed is Zed, for Zed's dead, who's dead? They're like, no, it's totally different. And I was like, okay, then fucking give me some answers. So then who am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, who's and that's dead? where the, that's where the answer stopped Zed. out of my group. I have 15 people in my group, and not a single fucking person can answer my question. So I turn around, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ask strangers then. So I turn around, and strangers behind me. And I'm like, hey, guys. Um... 
is Zed a part of Zed's dad? And they all start laughing and they're like, good one. And I'm like, no, I'm not kidding. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So no, <laughs> we can understand how you would think that, but it's two DJs. One is Hooks and I think DC are mm -hmm. the two DJs for him. And uh, I was like, how did they even get their name? Apparently it's from a Pulp Fiction line. I was about to say, yeah. The last Something. words of the story, if the movie was told in chron chronological order. <laughs> so it's just kind of ironic that Zed and Zed's Dead are two massive headlining DJs. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, yeah, why is the other guy Zed? Why, what's his name? All right, Zed's Dead's cooler then because it comes from Pulp Fiction. Who's Zed? I don't know, man. I was I was just looking for answers to questions, and the, and the strangers behind me were very nice. Like once they understood, like oh no, this guy, they were clearly like very big fans. So it was like funny to them. <laughs> that I insulted them because we we're like it was eleven fifteen when I'm asking this question. The show goes off in half an hour, you know. <laughs> and they're like, "Where the fuck have you been?" And I'm like, "No, no I get it. Let's just don't worry about that." You know, this is why I'm here. <laughs> y'all are the pros. I just I'm want doing to research. Ask. I'm doing research. So the nipples come in because, um, <laughs> you know, part of my favorite thing to do, it, it shows to fuck with people. So I'm making very hard eye contact with my buddy Colin and pinching my nipples at the same time, you know, biting my bottom lip. I probably did it for five minutes. Mm. That's a record. Maybe dude. he never looked at me. So I got to have a really good moment where I'm like, who saw me not make eye contact with Colin and just look like I'm getting some fetish kink off watching this show? You know what? I get props to Colin. He saw in the corner. He was like, I'm not going to give it to him. Not, not giving it to him. I get props to Colin on that one. I don't think, no, I don't think this was a peripheral decision because there's many other moments where we were laughing, goofing around or whatever. He was kind of a, a row or two down. So, mm -hmm. It was it was a hard fish to catch anyway. I get it, you know. I'm looking for a marlin, but I know there's people around me that uh, that looked at me. No, because oh, it. The other thing too, I can't believe they didn't cancel the show. It started raining, like fucked up thunderstorm, raining, and there was thunder and lightning going off all around wow. the venue. And I'm That's like, good luck. I'm, You're here. I, once the third or fourth fuck came out, he's like, why, why do you keep saying fuck? And I'm like, well, because of what we took, and I know when it's going to hit, and they should cancel the show. If, they, if they're like, if they're looking at the same thing I'm looking at, like that lightning <laughs> should hit us. <laughs> you could see to it, Rod Rocks. You could see it coming like toward you, and you're like, mm, let's get a little closer. <laughs> well, it was coming from behind us going that way. But the oh. <laughs> storm cell, I'm watching it dump. And I'm like, if that storm cell is attached to the same thing behind me, which it is, yeah, that, this is going to be fucked up. And it was fucked up, poured down, um, and uh, they, they didn't end up canceling it. So, But at that point, you know, when you're soaking, I just took my shirt off and whatever. And so there was no shirt getting away in these nipples is what I'm trying to express. <laughs> Those nipples were going to be freed no matter what. <laughs> Let them hang. Let them hang. <laughs> Let them hang. Yeah, dude. That's that, well. That's good to know. Then they they do not fuck around there. Then at the Red Rocks, they're like, "Hey, you came for the natural venue. It's mm -hmm. all natural here. The only time they cancel it looks like is if it's hailing golf ball hails falling on you." I couldn't believe they didn't cancel it though. I'm like, it, what is the rule when you're at like a big event like a, stadium? Well, I know. I think three miles lightning, right? Lightning within three miles, they'll shut it down. You, you know, see it and they wait. It's got to be like uh, no strikes for half an hour. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. This might have been. I don't know. Whatever <laughs> rule they have going on, I'm they're happy like, for it. <laughs> they're like, we got another strike. Good, keep it going. Another strike. All right, keep it going. They're like, more strikes. Keep it going. Even if it's you know three miles, yeah, we might have been right outside of three miles, right as a crow flies, but. uh it was bam, bam, bam. bam. Maybe it was, it was like, just enhanced fuck. because of the the rocks, the amphitheater. Maybe it was just enhanced around. Oh yeah. no, you couldn't hear shit. I mean, they, the DJs were still going. The only time the DJs stopped is when water got in the board, and they, <laughs> it just it stopped, stop. And they're like, 
Zed's about to die, folks. We <laughs> yeah, Zed is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and they had two rhythm artists on their lineup that uh, I, I didn't really understand. Like, I'm not going to say this was, I was perturbed by this fact, but feeling like the next day being July 4th, but having prominent UK artists on the lineup for an American show. It wasn't my duty to go up there and unplug the set. <laughs> but it felt like it. You're like, Did, is this what I'm here for? Unplug this? He's I like, wonder this if is, he booked this it. This is what we're doing in the UK. Whatever. I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. I was like, <laughs> it's literally in five hours America's birthday. Like, I don't we're know. We're trying to push. Yeah, I don't know why we're having UK folks on here. <laughs> my, uh, Maybe it was know. the boom. Maybe your job was the boom. That's why they brought him up there because they were like, How's that feel, Britain? You lost <laughs> once. You're going to lose two more times. Yeah, and I also felt like we shouldn't have to pay taxes on, like, tea and fireworks. That feels like that should be a tax-free event. I don't know about fireworks. Oh, you mean just for the event? You mean for, like, oh, for July 4th. Yeah, sorry. For tea, though. Yeah, because of, yeah, I see where you're getting at now. I mean, wasn't the crux of Yeah. pretty well, big beer argument? too. Beer too, then you know. Mm, beer, I think we're getting of staple goods now. I mean, you could say guns. You don't like beer as a staple good? No, America I'm, runs I'm on we're, beer. We're getting outside of like staple argument goods. I mean, I get it. It could lump it all in. You know, beaver hides <laughs> shouldn't be taxed either. <laughs> Slaves. Yeah. What else shouldn't have been taxed? Hot dogs, cheese, buns, gas, Chevy pickup trucks. What? <laughs> are Maybe Chevys even American made? Where are they made at? Well, they used to be. Now they're made in Mexico, I think. Same with Ford. They're all made other places. Mm hmm. Isn't it? Well, that's the NAFTA. That's the NAFTA agreement, right? Mm-hmm. Between Canada, Mexico, is that and still the a US. thing? I felt like Trump got rid of, uh, tried to do the best he could with dissolving NAFTA. No, it got re upped. We were just getting screwed by it, and Canada was bitching about it. And then Trump was like, "Ah, uh-uh. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to re up that one." When do we get more bullshit in the mail again? When's the next election? When do we That's get to the- start? Con- well, the the next election is. The big one's next year, I'm pretty sure. I think so we the have primaries. a... The primaries actually might come up in November. So we'll probably start getting it in August. Getting all that fun stuff in the mail. Good mm. lighter fuel. Well, I just like, you know, preoccupying myself with things that, like, probably really aren't going to majorly shift just, anything in one way direction. I love but saving them all, and they all say the same thing. And they're like, taxes, you know, fuel kids. Taxes fuel kids. Taxes fuel education. Taxes fuel whatever. <laughs> like they both say the same thing. Mm. I wish we could make it a little bit more about like trans rights, though. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's going to definitely be a bigger thing this year for sure. <laughs> well, I just want them to be like, "What's your gender?" Not like, or like, "What do you identify as?" Because I saw a video today that I really agree with. The woman was like, "There's two genders, and a woman." And they're like, well, what if somebody says they want to identify as something else? She's like, then cool. Yeah, right. What do you want to identify as? You could be a fucking lamp. I'll put a light bulb in your asshole. I don't give a fuck. But like when it comes to the world and reality, that's just, you know, most of us truth believing people, like that's the world we're going to exist in. People, I'll call you whatever you want to be. What it doesn't matter where, to me? Where does it come down to if you were in the hospital? Something's happened to you while you're dying. I don't know. This. Certain things saves you, and it comes down to, like, if you're a male or female, you get so much of either or something different. And you're, mm-hmm. like, you're a ma- born a male, you identify as a female. And then they, you say, I'm a female. Then they give you that, and then you're dead. And then they're like, what happened? Well, they're like, well, he's a male, you know? But he says mm-hmm. he's a female. What are we going to do? Yeah. Can, can the family come sue at that point? No. I don't think so because they called themselves a female at that point. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, nuance in that expression, you know, of like gender and roles and all and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That yeah, there's exceptions and nuance, but at the end of the day, it's pretty binary. Pretty, pretty binary. 
And uh, just like going down in a sub and imploding, pretty binary. You either are smart enough to do that or smart enough not to get in that thing. Or my childhood cat. I mean, people say like, you know, gay doesn't exist in nature. I had a bisexual cat and he was an outside cat. And I watched him have several litters with, you know, his uh, female counterparts. But he did this really funny thing where if a, a stray cat came in the yard, he's like a 12 year old. I distinctly remember this because you didn't have anything going on in the summer. You're too young to drive. Your friends don't have cars yet. You're not like, you know, you ain't got nothing going on if your friends can't come play. Or you're not like imagination, whatever. So I just sit in the front yard and just watch nature. And this cat would skull fuck the other stray cats or, <laughs> or pin them down and, and, hit him SWAT team through the back door too. It was, it was a really bizarre <laughs> thing to watch him assert dominance on other cats. And that, that changes you <laughs> as a, as a kid, you know, there's, you're like, there's national, what is it? The play animal playing in my backyard, but the David HBO Ivenberg. max version. Yeah. <laughs> As one male demonstrates to the other male, <laughs> what's possible? Uh, Turns out there's a lot possible we didn't know. <laughs> we actually watched David Attenborough the last night in Denver. Turns out that's yeah, a great to. wind it down. You're like, hundred percent. It's a great wind down. That David Attenborough, it's a perfect wind down of anything. We went from, uh, we were just doing a cuddle puddle and like, you know, letting just the weekend kind of come to a close. We're like, hey, let's uh, let's just wind it down together, folks. And uh, I think, well, I can't remember the name of the show. Um, the guy's screaming, he, like the, the scene where he's in the hot dog wiener suit and he crashed the hot dog wiener car into the building. Um, I thought so or something. I'll remember it later. We went from that. That was kind of a that was a brass comedy, really intense. Be back on to you in about two or three business days with the answer. I will. Yeah, I'll take down your information, submit requests. <laughs> went from that to Rick and Morty. No, Midnight Gospel. That was great. Oh, uh, that was always a good man. That sucks. They didn't re- redo. I can't believe they that. didn't. That's such a good. Why good didn't show. they? It got mixed in because they were coming out with all these other cartoons at the same time series with Netflix. And then remember they went on kind of a whole cancel a lot of their shows, period. Yeah. And the, that one just got mixed up into the canceling mm-hmm. everything. Well, the, the format we did it in, too, because we had two people that hadn't watched it, was we watched the first episode, then we watched the last episode. And Ooh. it was actually a really great way to uh, to just kind of, if you're going to pick two. That last one's deep, man. Right? It'll bring and a tear to your eyes. A horse tranquilizer really just put you in a... <laughs> spot where you're you're sucked in there um and then we went i can't remember the name of the show that we watched after that but there were no words and uh it was a it was a documentary and uh i I was introduced to that documentary it was mind-blowing and then then we finished off with david adbro have you ever heard of romeo and juliet a monkey's tale no yeah, I tried to get people. That was I was trying to steer us towards that documentary. So this is really interesting. The one uh, I believe it's like so you have the alpha monkey of his little pack, right? Mm-hmm. And another fun fact: a like a herd of monkeys is called a barrel of monkeys. Apparently, the other thing I learned that from Toy Story. Yeah. So we you have the alpha monkey and then his alpha chick. Well, Alpha Chick's daughter falls in love with an up-and-coming monkey from a, a rival gang. And so then they have turf wars, and these two are in love, and they're trying to sneak off. And then the, the monkeys are like taking the trains across town to fuck up the other monkeys, like getting knives. And it gets really, really intense. So if you ever have an yeah. opportunity to watch that, it's Romeo and Juliet, Monkey's Tale. Fascinating okay. documentary. Pre Planet of the Apes, I'm guessing. It definitely gives you the vibe that they're smarter than we give them credit for. Uh, I think so too. You know, I think so too. Take they take your shit, and if you don't give them food, they just throw it in the river. I'm like, All right, fuck you. Could you could have afforded not to do that? <laughs> yeah, right? it's, 
Uh, you ain't afford not much to ask for. Apparently, you don't give a shit about your bag, dude. <laughs> it's your fault. This is happening. They're like they don't need anything, but they're like these people need shit. And this <laughs> is in this bag right here. <laughs> I'm a monkey, dude. I don't give a fuck. I mean, <laughs> this is showing you. I got a tail. I got hair. <laughs> yeah, you're well, naked you. under them clothes. So <laughs> I'm naked right now. Look at it. I'll put the bag in front of it, too. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was that. And the, and the Airbnb we stayed in was dope. It felt like something from real world. There were arcade machines, pool table, hot oh, tub, that's cool. movie theater, sauna. I mean, it had everything you'd possibly need. It's hard when you book things like that. Like an Airbnb like that, but you plan on all these outward things. You're like, we could just spend a whole weekend chilling in this place. We did a pretty good job, though. I felt like um, it it did follow the golden rule of one thing a day. When you have that many people together, I think we had 18, 16 people in the house. If you just give one thing where most of the people are going to it, you got Mm -hmm. the memory, and then you got a bunch of stuff you can do around the house and enjoy it, soak it in, you know. That's why I thought we pulled Vegas off pretty well. thought we did a good job on that. Michael Everyone said it was books. one of the best trips he's ever been on. I personally thought it was fucking hell from front to back. I mean, wow. That front was... to back. I mean, from four <laughs> months back trying to plan this thing to a month later trying to collect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still doing oh. that. I mean, <laughs> wow. What a beautiful lesson in business that is, huh? That's why everyone goes. Now I understand I give a deposit up front. <laughs> Mm-hmm. from business owners they know they're like yeah these people ain't gonna do shit oh yeah and the credit i've still been trying to sell off your credit for that go-kart dune buggy whatever oh if you can find that that'd be awesome i'm trying i'm actively trying with people <laughs> i run into i'm like you got any vegas trips coming up going there you want to go to the desert for a minute like <laughs> dude it, i would be awesome though to be the let's say i did show up and i had that credit just show up and just rip <laughs> just by myself. And then they're like, you're never coming back. Like, you think I'm coming back anyway? <laughs> that was a credit, dude. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> just come walking back out of the desert. They're like, where's the doom buggy? I'm like, you can go get it. <laughs> you ran out of gas. <laughs> That's a beautiful idea that I 1,000% encourage. Because it's for a single, too. And you just, all you got to do is get that guy again, just dip off to the left. Yeah. Gone. You're never allowed back. Like, I don't give a fuck. Really? I'm coming back here? No. Just ride, just ride it down the highway back to the facility. <laughs> Turn it in. There you go. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like I know how this works. I was here. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Don't need the safety briefing. It's stupid. Don't need a safety. <laughs> Y'all should get a safety briefing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, did you check out those videos I sent you about the the building in Vegas, the Sphere? Oh, dude, we gotta go to the Sphere. Sphere. <laughs> Sphere. Sphere. I, I was wondering if I said it right. No, wow. <laughs> you took that to another level. <laughs> <laughs> We definitely have to go to that thing. That thing looks amazing. And that's just the outside of it. Holy cow. I can't yeah. imagine what the inside of that thing is going to look like. Bono said it. Uh, they were touring it. Cause I think U2 is going to be the first concert there. Of course, U2 is the first concert there. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, this shit's wild. I I don't know. Like, I get it. I'm a big U2 fan. When they were at Bonnaroo, I think I was the only one from our group that was uh, real intense about going. And after seeing the show, I get it. You know, it's U2. Sick. But Sick. how how do they they must have the best agents in the world? I mean, Bono himself's worth a billion dollars. Do you know that? A well, billion. I mean, probably after that hoax on the Apple thing, probably made a lot of money off of that. Um, well, there's some big deal. I remember hearing about that in the crowd as I was pissing people off going by. I was learning some cool facts about how much he has uh just like fucked people out of money. I don't know. Everyone's got well, opinion you, on artists. But. You saw the episode about uh, on South Park about him, right? Mm-mm. The whole episode. So there's a whole <laughs> spoiler alert. So there's a whole episode about who could take like the biggest shit 
on <laughs> on the like the world and it turns out Randy takes like a massive shit, right? And they're like, Oh, it could be the record, it breaks the record and it turns out Bono like held the record for being able to take the biggest shit. Well, it's because he does all the charity work or whatever, right? All that stuff, right? But it turns out <laughs> it turns out it one of like the priests had taken a huge shit. And then decided to raise the shit as its own. And then it turned out Bono was the shit. <laughs> he raised it. So he held the world record because he turned it into the biggest shit. Bono was just a piece of shit. <laughs> I love the story. I love the storylines from South Park. I mean, those guys just sit around. And they're like, you know what? How many left hooks can we put in the storyline? I can't wait to go to uh, whatever that thing is in Denver. They just opened up. Oh shit! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta give it respect. In Denver, it. yeah, Denver South. Yeah, I want to make sure Casa Bonita. Casa Bonita. I gotta respect it. It just opened up in Denver. What is it? Oh, what is it? What is it not? Really, you can go in there. I wouldn't know. I mean, that's just watch the Casa Bonita episode of South Park. You can, they literally, you can like jump off of waterfalls and dive into it. That you could, you get like these special Mexican burritos in there, and then something else. I Is that a restaurant? Can was. I get a category or a hint? It's a like restaurant, where, restaurant, okay. yeah, All right. restaurant. Yeah. But Didn't there's know. a whole episode about Casa Bonita that they made. And they bought it out and revamped it so they could make it their own thing. But it's like it's a like true Casa Bonita, Denver. Look it up. Full many many years has been around. They made a full episode where Cartman Cartman was obsessed with it, like obsessed with the restaurant. And to the point it got so popular, they just went ahead. I think it shut down for a while. They bought out the rights to it, and then they just opened it up in Denver as their so own like thing. The South Park Company bought the rights to it. Yeah, Trey and Matt bought it. Nice. And open it up. Yeah. Gotcha. And they just, uh, they abolish tipping. Everyone get all the servers get paid 30 bucks an hour. There's like, there's no tipping in here. They're like, we just want people to come in and have a good time. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I wish more places did that, honestly. Well, I mean, it's only American thing. I'm pretty sure. Everywhere else around the world, they pay a good wage. It's mm -hmm. just an American thing where they're like, oh no, the people should start, start taking care of it. Which it wouldn't be like if more people went to places where the owners were taking care of it. If, if, if all the rest, if enough restaurants were like, we're banning tipping, we're just going to give it out. And then people went to those restaurants instead of the ones tipping, it would switch in an instant for sure. Yeah. Cause I personally, I'm not a big fan of tipping cause it, it's like, it's so objective that you'll have people like, I mean, I was raised in a service industry between my you know, mom, sister, and brothers and all that. I mean, we it's like 50, 60 years in my immediate family of service industry, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I get I get how it works. But when every time I've gone to other countries, I'm not mad if I get shit service. Why is it that a person, a server, if they had a bad night the night before, for whatever reason, drunk, family, whatever, and now they're coming in with a bad mood the next day, why should they get punished based off of their service compared to somebody else that doesn't have a service job, but they had the same issues the night before, and they had the bad day the next day? I'm going to provide bad service anyways, just because I'm having a bad day. But mm -hmm. because I'm in this separate industry, it's going to happen like that. And it's a good industry to come up in. As well. I mean, I did serving. I did busboy. I did line cook. I did every position in the restaurant. Tripping. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, tilt a kill, baby. So, when you get. <laughs> I love how that face came across. You're like, did, did you? I, hey. I just felt like the, you know, I was like, I'm not going to ask any questions. You know, like sometimes you feel a story coming on. You're like, I just nah. push that back <laughs> down. Hey. 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 Hey, 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 hey. I'm going to get your contact info. You can call me and tell me about it later. But, you know. But now, I'm just doing all that, and it's like, okay, how come the line cooks get paid the same hourly wage and the busboys get paid the same hourly wage? But because the server's got some shitty people that day, they're not going to make the same amount for the day? Well, the funny part is, too, I don't personally give a fuck how someone's day is going when I'm looking for service 
Uh, no, I'm talking about the 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 guests. Yeah, like, the guests could just be at. Me. What if they get five back to back assholes that are like fuck tipping? I don't like tipping, and now that server's not going to make anything, even though they provide a great service. But the line cook, the manager, the bus boys, dishwasher, all make their money for the day. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, the the weird part is too is that um, I think you should leave. That's not the weird part. That's the name of the show. I think you should leave. Mm, I think you should leave. That's a good name for a restaurant, too. I think you should leave. <laughs> What's the name of the restaurant that throws rolls at you and then puts very vulgar things on your hat? Oh, man. That's in Alabama, isn't it? Dickies? It's not Dickies. The, Dick's D- Crap Shack? Dick, Dick's is the name of the bar that does put vulgar things on your hat. Chrissy and I went to that. Yeah. Well, Nashville, but there is a place in Alabama that throws rolls at you mm-hmm. from a distance, and you catch that bad boy and pull your hands on fire. I'll tell mm. you what, you catch that. I love a nice. I saw. I saw one time, bowl. someone caught it, and the other half went and hit the other kid in the face. Like, but it wasn't like the crusty side of it. It was like the inside, right of the other. Bam! Hit him right in the face. Ah, scream across the bar. I, I was there on a. Sport trip. We all died laughing. <laughs> Unfortunate for that kid. Beautiful. That was so... It was like, I don't know, Mozart and motion or something, whatever. It just... It was amazing. What's the insurance conversation look like there? Well, I mean, you're in Alabama. You think there's insurance? <laughs> They're like... I still remember as a kid. Is the kid fine? My dad Probably. went to a restaurant. We were on a little road trip in Alabama. And they are like, would you like smoking or non-smoking? As a child that has, uh, I'm a grown man now. As a child, I had a lot of fucking trauma. As a grown man now, I don't have feelings. So it, it, seeing <laughs> my, how happy my dad was in that moment, like maybe reevaluate things. I've never seen him so happy. He was like smoking. Like, like as if the man had never smoked a day in his life, but was always craving it. And he was like, fucking smoke. I can smoke inside there. Like, what well, yes, was this post when they started getting rid of Mm-hmm. Smoking in restaurants, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember going so. to the Cracker Barrel, and they always had smoking on the far left hand side. They just had a piece of plexiglass in between. <laughs> this will stop it. <laughs> yeah, like the COVID shit, where they just put a piece of plexiglass there, and you're like, "Hey, I, I need uh, I need change for this twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I love going into bars that serve food that are just like absolute hole in the walls. And you just see everyone smoking. You're like, you been smoking here? Like, and they're like, no. <laughs> Everyone's just smoking. <laughs> Everyone's still smoking. Like, I, it's just by word here. Everyone smokes. Like, we're all in this together. Everyone, no one has a problem. If you have a problem here, just leave. <laughs> <Not Yeah. it. laughs> I mean, we're not we're not doing that great anyway. Like, your business is going to save this place. It's some rich lawyer. He's like, I, I'm not here for the money. I'm here for yeah. all of you degenerates. I'm just looking for a crack connection. That's it. <laughs> My boss is Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the big guy. The guy at the top. You know, what's funny is that guy probably has a fair amount of people to report to him. And they just, they just found themselves in that position one day. Just trying to make it somewhere in life. And they're they like just they keep getting a call to like we got some questions about you but like, god damn it <laughs> another one <laughs> can you imagine working your ass off and then one day you just find yourself in a position you're like hunter biden's my boss do i quit do i not quit mm, do i off myself do i off myself no nah, they'll do that for me. Uh, yeah, they'll, yeah they'll take care of that they'll take care, they'll of, take care of that that's a free a, a, that's a perk of this job. <laughs> Did you see, um, have you seen any updates on the Re- Ukraine war? Hmm. Just about Wagner, like flipping it for a minute, going towards Putin. Mm-hmm. And then some negotiation happened where Putin was like, basically to save your life, I'm going to make this negotiation with you, but I can't kill you because it's going to look really bad if yeah. I kill you right now. Yeah. And then Wagner's group got dispersed. I'm really curious to see how that plays out. I mean, honestly. Them get an interview with Wagner within the next year. (laughs) 
<laughs> if you can get an interview with Wagner, it's like, all right, maybe someone did uphold it. If he you can't, what's going on there? Well, it's just going to be interesting when, um, if Ukraine pushes them all the way back to whatever border that they want. <laughs> I've been hearing it's not been going very well for them. No, for I, I get updates like uh, every other day on it. They've, they've liberated, I think, uh, 400 towns in, oh, wow. since the counteroffensive. 8,000 square miles. Something like that, eight thousand square, something, something squared. Yeah, Same something squares. square. Yeah, Ukraine squared. <laughs> yeah, but so imagine <laughs> they push them all the way back. The thought experiment is like they get them back to the border that they want, and then they go, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. The only thing that would stop them <laughs> from keeping going is America. The fact that we've supported them so much, we'd be like, hey, 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 this is the border. No, I don't think so. We're gonna go a little I farther. I thought it was really ironic that like one of the, the head of one of our branches of Secret Service or whatever intelligence agency had a conversation with Putin and was like, "We were not behind the coup because they really want to make sure they know we're <laughs> only was... trying to fuck you through Ukraine, right? <laughs> not from inside Russia. We are a third party agency. We're yeah. not a." immediate vendor like imagine how explicit that conversation is going on like america's like no this so you're not gonna win here's how we know we're gonna fuck you from this angle specifically like then they clarified that conversation like we don't we didn't want that we just want we we want want, that's your guy them to fuck you right that's That's one of his that's one of his right hand like inner circle people too Mm -hmm. that did that that's wild that they would go and do that there's got to be so much dissension and lying going on in the military ranks of the Russians. I mean, what I thought was interesting was part of the negotiations. I can't remember the country, but one of the country's presidents led the negotiation. Like think of high Belarus. How, Belarus. Think of how high of like a negotiation is, is that this other guy running a whole nother country <laughs> have to be like, well, that's a we need you to state step for in. Russia. That, They're like, that's we need completely... you to that's their like, yeah, that's one of their puppets, but they get a whole, like, it's not like they hire a professional guy. They're like, we need one of the most trusted people we can find, puppet state president. You're going to come in and lead this negotiation of what's going on. Fuck your country for the next week. You're going to come help this out. <laughs> to be a fly on the wall in some of those those conversations, those situations have to be so intense. I don't, any I don't any kind of Putin. war stuff. How long you give Putin? Like twenty twenty six, maybe. It's either gonna die of he's either dying of cancer, right? There'll be a mutiny that just like take him over and push him out, or he'll die in office. Like that's just I feel like one of those three. And the dying what in office would be post twenty twenty six. You I know, think. hot take. I'm gonna say by the end of the year. Think so? Yeah, yeah to it, the end of the year. End of the year. End of twenty twenty four for sure. I mean, everything's cratering. I think it's going to go into election cycle. I think it's going to be used as a nice little, like all this crazy stuff is going to start happening with Putin and everything, and they're going to use it as a nice little distraction from a bunch of other stuff happening. Yeah, I mean, it's so tough to tell. I mean, I have limited information. I'm really just following it for, uh, like my TikTok feed's kind of weird. If I could be over there without dying, that'd be awesome. Just like drop me off. Just go talk to a few people. What just show up in the trenches? Yeah. Just show up. Just be like Hey man, you want to be on the podcast? <laughs> just show with a white flag, just journalist. Just run to the <laughs> other side. Go to the Russian side. What's up, guys? I had a Russian cake the other day at the pool. And I thought of I thought of you guys. Um it was like a nine layer honey cake. <laughs> I want to look at something. I just want to look at our uh, audience. Do we have any people in the Ukraine or whatever? Let me go with <laughs> no at the moment. Mm, no. We, no, we, we got we, nobody we, in either of those countries. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. And not even less than 1%. We got a whole bunch of places, but none, none in those. I bet we're blocked. We're definitely blocked in those countries for sure. Uh, not, yeah. Maybe not Ukraine, but Russia for sure. We're, there's no way we're getting past Whatever we security have to, they have. We gotta spread the message of hippies. Yeah, they're probably not big on free <laughs> thinking either. You know. Where's Cyprus? I don't know what Cyprus is. 
Isn't that a... Serb- we got Serbia. We got a Serbia Serbia. listener. Hey, okay. thanks, guys. Lithuania. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on over there? We support it. We, we support, support it. Hey, we got United Arab of Emeritus. Thank you, princes of uh, Saudi Arabia. I appreciate you guys listening. If you can send some money our way, that'd be great. Um, yeah, oh, fair enough. Our sponsor today is Money, brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> Crypto. Give us some, baby. Give us some. We'll lose it for you. <laughs> um, speaking of which, we might have a guest um, coming on the podcast to talk about that here soon. I'll I'll update you on that after. But is that our buddy from one of the earlier episodes? No, but he is going to Burning Man, and uh, I saw that today. So he'll be hopefully one of our witnesses for the wedding. We gotta that'd be cool. Sort it out. An open invitation. If you're going to Burning Man, you want to see the love of my life and I get married. More than welcome. Be ready to almost die. That comes with it. Just know that. Well, that, yeah. I mean, that's a prerequisite of Burning Man. That's not necessarily what I'm going to put you through. But if you do want that, that's that's an add-on package available at no cost. <laughs> The uh, oh, and then we got a buddy coming on in a couple few weeks. Man, that's gonna be a great show. That is gonna be a great one. I'm, I'm excited. excited. I hope he that. really opens up for the whole story. That'd be awesome. A lot of Floridians are gonna enjoy that one. Yeah, we've got a couple of guests. We gotta get on, uh, nail down just the dates. Um, man, it is wild that we are already in July. Yeah, we're already in July. I'd like to point out we never celebrated this. How many episodes are we in now? I feel like... 106. 106, folks. We passed 100 and didn't even know it. Yeah, we did. We mentioned it. Oh, we did? I, Man. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's my brain cells trying to put it together. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I mean, I, I think it's 106, 110, something like that. Somewhere, somewhere nice. in that range. And I um, love the new editor we found, folks. I hope you appreciate the new editor, the new content we're putting out. Shout out to Tom. Amazing computer fix. what some creatives can do, you know? Yeah. Some creatives, some dollars. Go a long way. That is what it is. It's money. It always <laughs> comes back to money. That's why we're here, folks. We're trying to get the professional side together so you can keep the hippie going. Yeah. And if you guys want to support that, head on over to testkitplus.com for slash professional hippies. You can trust strangers now, too. Test before you and just. All right. I think we're going to land the plane. Anything else you want to bring up to the to the podcast world, Colton? No, I think that's good for now. Land it, baby. All right. Well, hey, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. Share it with your friends. Share it with those that you love. Share it with uh, those that you hate. You know, give them a punishment. Send this episode to them. Those, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, give a subscribe to us. Like, follow. Share it, whatever. Till next time, folks. See ya. Peace.